Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Akansha Parimu. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. Pakistan's former PM Imran Khan announces March on capital to call for early elections. And Sri Lankan Tamils yearn for answers about relatives who disappeared in civil war. And now for all the details. India's Foreign Minister S. Jay Shankar on Wednesday said the normalization of India-China ties are in world's interest as he met the outgoing Chinese envoy to India's Su Vidong. He emphasized that peace and tranquility in the border areas are essential to maintaining bilateral ties. India's Foreign Minister S. Jay Shankar met the outgoing Chinese envoy to India's Su Vidong on Wednesday and said Normalization of India-China ties are in world's interest as he emphasized that peace and tranquility in the border areas are essential to maintaining bilateral ties. Su, who assumed office in July 2019, is leaving at a time when the two sides are trying to manage ties following the 2020 border clash in Ladakh region that has remained the dominant issue between the two Asian giants. In his farewell remarks, the Chinese envoy also stressed the need to resolve differences and uphold the principle of non-interference in internal affairs. But we should break out of the geopolitics trap and find a new path that is different from the past. There's enough room in the world for China and India to develop together. And the two countries and the peoples should have enough wisdom to find a way to live in peace and achieve win-win cooperation. Since 2020, India and China have had several rounds of diplomatic and military level meetings over the border situation. India has repeatedly emphasized that India-China relations cannot be normal unless the border situation is, and if China disturbs the peace, and tranquility in border areas, it will impact the relations further. Poor air quality in Indian capital, New Delhi, leads to a surge in cases of breathlessness and chest congestions among the elderly every year around late October. The city of 20 million was shrouded in haze as the wind speed dipped and the AQI hovered at around 345 in most places on Wednesday. Residents, especially the elderly in New Delhi, faced trouble breathing and complained of chest congestion as pollution levels remain toxic in India's national capital on Wednesday. Scores of locals were seen at hospitals to get themselves examined as the air quality index hovered around the very poor category two days after the city celebrated the Hindu festival of lights, Diwali, with firecrackers despite a government ban. Every year during Diwali, because the pollution level goes high, the AQI is very poor most of the times because of the stubble burning as well as the crackers and the wind movement is very less. So, you know, the dust particles just stay near the earth and that leads to the smog and uh, people have a lot of difficulty in breathing. The locals said they feel suffocated and the polluted air of the city brought irritation to their eyes. Many were compelled to wear masks to prevent themselves from inhaling the foul air. Delhi is the world's most polluted capital and its air becomes particularly bad from mid-December to February as heavy, cold air traps dust, vehicle emissions and smoke from burning crop stubble in states like Punjab and Haryana envelops it. Pakistan's former Prime Minister Imran Khan has announced his much-awaited Long March rally towards capital Islamabad this coming Friday to call for early elections. Since being ousted in April, Khan has been demanding snap elections, which the ruling coalition has rejected, 
saying they will be held as scheduled later next year. Pakistan's former Prime Minister and opposition PTI party chief Imran Khan on Tuesday announced that he would begin a protest march with his supporters from the eastern city of Lahore to Pakistan's capital Islamabad on Friday to call for early elections. Smaller protests by Khan supporters took place last week after Pakistan's top election tribunal found Khan guilty of unlawfully selling gifts from foreign dignitaries and heads of state, removing him of his parliamentary seat. Since being removed from office by a no-confidence vote in the legislature in April, Khan has held protests across the country calling for snap elections, but the government has said that they will be held as scheduled later next year. People have to make clean elections in this country. They have to make a decision. There is no other way to make this in Pakistan. The Election Commission of Pakistan last week ruled that Khan would be removed from his seat in Parliament, accusing him of buying and selling gifts in state possession worth more than 140 million Pakistani rupees. But it did not order a longer disqualification from public office, which under Pakistani law can be up to five years. The political instability has also fueled economic uncertainty with international ratings agencies questioning if the current government can maintain difficult economic policies in the face of political pressure and looming elections. Moving on, Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif has ordered a formation of a judicial commission to investigate the killing of well-known Pakistani journalist Arshad Sharif in a police shooting in Kenya. The circumstances of Sharif's death have sparked widespread outrage in Pakistan. Pakistan will set up a judicial commission to investigate the killing of well-known Pakistani journalist Arshad Sharif in a police shooting in Kenya, Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif has said. Pakistan's President Arif Alvi on Tuesday visited the residence of Arshad Sharif along with the First Lady Samina Alvi. They offered their condolences to the mother and family members of Sharif, who was shot dead in Nairobi on Sunday when police opened fire on the vehicle he was travelling in as it drove through their roadblock without stopping. The killing has sparked outrage in Pakistan. It was not immediately clear what the terms of reference or jurisdiction of the Judicial Commission would be, given the death occurred in a foreign country. Questions over the killing of the journalist have risen in Pakistan as he had recently fled the country citing threats to his life after working for many years as a prime-time television news show host. A Kenyan police watchdog said it was investigating the incident. Former Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan on Tuesday said the incident was a target killing but did not offer any evidence to support the claim. The Kenya Union of Journalists has also cast doubt over the police's version of events. Sri Lankan Tamil families have continued to yearn for answers about their relatives who disappeared in the 26-year-long civil war that ended in 2009. Few, if any, out of the thousands missing have been accounted for and government officials have offered varying details of what happened to them, which is still unknown, despite investigative efforts. Sri Lankan Tamil families have yearned for answers about their relatives who disappeared in the 26-year-long civil war that ended in 2009. Thousands of people, mostly Tamils, went missing during the civil war in what were known as enforced disappearances. But few, if any, have been accounted for and government officials have offered varying details of what happened to them, which is still unknown despite investigative efforts. Arumuga Lakshmi is one of hundreds of mothers who regularly participate in protests demanding action and justice for their loved ones, not knowing if they were dead or alive. During the brutal civil war between the Sri Lankan government and militant group, the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam, 
Lakshmi's daughter Rajni Tharvi went missing in 2004, followed three years later by her son Seva Kumar. Sri Lanka says it remains committed to pursuing tangible progress on human rights, but a recent UN report contradicts the claim. Government employee Valentina Daniel, whose younger brother disappeared in 1999, said her 66-year-old injured mother also disappeared during the war's final phase in 2009. Mahesh Katundala, chairman of OMP, the Office on Missing Persons, refuted claims of genocide of Tamils, saying the majority of those who disappeared had been abducted by the militant group or factions opposed to it. An OMP spokesperson said the fuel shortages crippling Sri Lanka during the Indian Ocean Islands worst economic crisis in more than 7 decades have now made it impossible to meet a target of 5000 interviews by year end as secondary schools remain closed for afghan girls for more than 400 days us special envoy reena miri has said the taliban can not deny half the population education and work opportunities and claim to move afghanistan towards economic independence The international community has made ensuring rights of girls and women as key demands for any future recognition of the Taliban administration. US Special Envoy for Afghan Women, Girls and Human Rights, Reena Amiri, has expressed concern over the closure of secondary schools for girls in Afghanistan for more than 400 days. Amiri said that the Taliban cannot deny half the population education and work opportunities and claim to move Afghanistan towards economic independence. Education of girls is the key to lifting Afghanistan from poverty, she said. Schools for girls were scheduled to reopen across Afghanistan in late March after months of closure. But the Taliban indefinitely extended the ban on Afghan female students from 7th grade and above. The move has drawn widespread criticism since then. The international community has made ensuring human rights, especially rights of girls and women, as key demands for any future recognition of the Taliban administration. Afghanistan's assets, which have remained frozen due to sanctions, have severely hampered banking, business, and development, leading to greater insecurity, poverty, and isolation. Members of two clans gathered and hurled stones at each other on Tuesday to celebrate an ancient festival near India's northern hill town of Shimla. An enormous crowd of locals and tourists gathered to witness the uncanny festival which was celebrated on a large scale after 2 years of coronavirus restrictions. Take a look. In an odd celebration, people in India's northern Himachal Pradesh state gathered in large numbers on the streets on Tuesday to hurl stones at each other as part of Hindu festival known as Patthro ka Mela. This age-old festival is celebrated annually on the day after Diwali or the Festival of Lights in Galog village which is about 30 kilometers from India's famous Shimla hill town. The day which was observed after a 2 year pandemic lull was commemorated as devotees offered prayers and played the drums ahead of the tradition of stone pelting. This mele ka bada aitihasik mahatva raha hai aur main to pichle 50 60 saalon se lagatar is mele ko dekhta raha hu. Ye bada durbhagya tha ki pichle 2 saalon se corona ki wajah se ye mela jo hai sthagit raha. और इस बार 22 में सन 22 में इस खेल खेल का ये उत्सव देख करके और लोगों का ये माहौल देख करके बड़ी प्रसन्नता हो रही है फॉर्ट बिटवीन द मेंबर्स ऑफ टू क्लैंस द हिस्टोरिक रिचुअल ऑफ स्टोन पेल्टिंग इन्वॉल्व्स डेवटीज हर्लिंग स्टोन्स इन द एयर अंटिल समवन इज हिट एंड ब्लीड्स द ब्लड इज देन ऑफर टू हिंदू गॉडेस भद्रकाली द फेस्टिवल सिंबलाइजेस द विक्ट्री ऑफ गुड ओवर ईविल The festival is a belief that the erstwhile queen of the Dhami area started this with an effort to end the tradition of human sacrifice in the temple of Kali, the Hindu goddess of destruction. Before performing sati, an outlawed 
tradition of self-immolation by a widow on her husband's pyre, the queen divided different tribes into two clans and started this tradition of stone pelting, ending the ritual of human sacrifice. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.